Hi everybody, welcome to Gunpla TV. Hey guys. Brought to you by Halloween Japan. This episode, Ryan, we're getting around to talking about SD. I have a stack of SD here, and we're gonna, we're gonna touch on the subject briefly. So it's not a disease? No, I do not have, nor have ever contracted <laughs> an SD. That's good. And what about you, Ryan? I'm what do you have? I'm talking about my, my destroyed phalanx. But speaking of SD. <laughs> You have a destroyed phalanx. That sounds I did. serious. Yeah, my girlfriend complained about it. But yeah, uh, I kind of built the guy. Okay. So I'm just gonna stick him together. I'm. Well, I'll discuss it more later. But sure. what have you got for us next? Uh, well, let's uh, uh, talk about uh, the new stuff. New, new stuff. stuff. So I'm gonna move, push these out of the way here. Yeah, I'll move my guys now, out of uh, the way. This kit. It's actually not new, Ryan. But people will recognize it's not it. New. This is the uh, Resil Commander. Okay. The Master Grade Resil. And previously, if you wanted a Master Grade Resil, you had to choose the. The normal one or the commander. Well, let's see this guy right here. Well, today the new Rezzo came out. And look at this oh, guy. It's huge. It's enormous. It is the Rezzo Type C Defensor Unit. So I'm actually going to pop this box open. Okay. And we'll have a look. So, what's inside this box that makes it just so enormous? Well, we already know that it's going to come with that monster backpack. So, we're going to have a, a look inside here. And uh, already, look at the size <laughs> of these beam sabers. This is going to be huge. Is this a perfect grade? I don't know. It's, it's enormous. Again, the normal. these are all normal standard parts of the Rezzle. So we are going to get the uh, markings exclusive for the... I really like that orange. orange. I, a, I love that one. orange. I love that, that orange. orange. Thanks, Sid. <laughs> all right. Now we're just going to start to look at the, uh, the weapons and slash backpack parts here. And you can see these, these runners are made for this kit itself. And just how... How big they are, how long they are, and uh, more pieces again for uh, oh. backpack slash. Even the side skirts are quite sizable. Oh, is this the new plastic they're using, or is this? Ah, it looks like they've gone with the, the new plastic again. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's going to be lighter. Yeah. So which is good because it's, a, it's such a big kit. We're going to wonder how it's going to stand up. But they've actually. Uh, in the shots you see on the box, mm -hmm. let's have a look. They have a stand here. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah. Wow, those backpacks look freaking awesome. Yeah, they have this little little mount just to kind of hold this this backpack up. It's not okay. a normal action-based stand. No. So I'm actually gonna flip open the manual here really quickly. It'll be the last thing they have here, and we'll see. The, because it's not normal, chances are that they've included it for you. But I want to see the instructions here. It's, it's called S30, piece S30. So it's actually part of the S runner. And the S runner is which one? Okay. We're doing this live on television. Oh my God, live. S runner, which one are you? Oh, okay. You're gonna be big and black. Where are you? The familiar feeling of rummaging through a box I know, that looking sound. for, looking that for sound. a runner. Crunkle, crunkle, crunkle. Was this, was this what it was like when you built your Zoids, Ryan? Ah, here we go. There it is. This little piece right here. This will be oh, what that's will help you sizable. Uh, stand up this big guy. Because the resil is big enough as it is. But with that backpack, man, he needs some assistance. So, I'm actually going to take this guy home today. And, uh, Are you gonna give it a go? We'll see. I got a new shenanigan coming. I gotta worry about. But I want to be able to do everything. Yeah. So uh, this is the That's newest, impressive. the greatest, the biggest Rezzle there is. I'm just gonna stick this guy back here because we gotta put it in a box and send it off to. Uh, oh yeah, Robert. Uh, and Robert should... one eight four. Okay. So uh, I got a lot of SD here, yeah. and it's the main part of the show. We'll talk about it in a bit. Uh, Ryan, it's time for you to shine. Oh I yes. Want to see what you've got for us. Let me get set up and uh, we'll get on it. Okay. So, Sid, I was a pretty good boy. Yeah? I actually built this guy. Yeah? He's all done up. Even though you a took few... four, uh, two days off, giving you a six-day weekend or whatever it was? Actually, I, built him, I built it over a weekend. Oh, okay. So it took me about three hours. It's not bad. And I think I'm getting better at yeah. snapping these guys together. I would hope so. <laughs> the reason I kind of snapped him together that quick was because I actually want to start doing some weather damage. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a great tutorial on our blog called um, How to Do Weather Damage. Yeah. Which That's basically sh title. shows you how to put holes and, and mm -hmm. stuff. So I'm going to take one of these rocket things here, yeah. make a few holes and then spray them and try and actually make it look like proper ba battle damage. Cool. Something I've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, 
just about the kit it's uh, pretty straightforward look I think you would need glue and I think it is a glue kit because you'll notice here like these bits here come off pretty easily so you'll need to just glue these guys back in and there's a few like cosmetic pieces that I haven't included here that you'll need to glue on mm -hmm. but overall I'd say it's it's just a pretty straightforward snap fit with a bit of glue yeah so let me go ahead and actually just start putting this guy together okay uh, normally I get all the pieces the wrong way around, so I'm sure everyone will correct me. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the guy's little cockpit. It's home. <laughs> I love his head and he has two eye and ten eye. Yes. Which I didn't include because I didn't want to break them in, uh, yeah. in transit. Uh, got to make sure these are the right way around. And I really like the plastic on this kit. It's got a really good weight. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's pretty strong. And actually, I think there's two different kinds of plastic here. This green one and this brown one. Yeah, one's green, one's brown. No, no, the f you want to touch it, Sid? You want to feel what I'm talking about? <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> Maybe later. That's what you always say. <laughs> oh, and just to show you the kind of articulation in the legs. So there is a bit. Mm -hmm. His little feet move. Yeah. So, yeah. And then a very straightforward ball joint. Kind of like uh, you'll see on an SD or HG yeah. kit. Just no poly cap or what? Uh, there is a poly cap in there. Mm. So here we go. And uh, he does yoga. Check out that. Wow. Yeah, he's he's articulated, he's mate. Been, he's been the ladies stretching. love this guy. Yeah. He can do crazy stuff with his groin. Um, well, detailing wise, I'm gonna probably pull this guy apart. Mm -hmm. Paint these as a separate color from here. Yeah. Probably going to get into these gray bits here and paint them all a different color. I haven't decided what color yet. Yeah. I'm thinking camo. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, there's a desert wolf. Mm -hmm. Like these browns and stuff. So I might look at that. Okay. But yeah, I'm very happy with this little guy. He sits on, he takes up a good spot on my desk. Yeah. And uh, let's look forward to some uh, battle damage. So, um, yeah, I'm very happy with this guy. And like I mentioned before, that I'm going to be doing some special detailing. It looks pretty cool. It is so. very cool, and I really like the plastic. But, Sid, I think yeah. it's time for SDs. Yes, it's time for some SD action. And, uh, Ryan, I actually got a couple on the table here. You do? This is the Kshatriya. Uh -huh. And uh, the Kshatriya, even in the normal HG1144 scale, is this enormous thing. Yeah, it's huge. It is huge, huge. but you can get your, uh, your cute you little HG little Kshatriya. Do you uh, like that? Yeah. What do you think? I actually have this one here, Ryan, because uh, I wanted to show this guy to you because there's something special about this kit. And what is special about it? This kit can actually transform, Ryan. Such a small kit can transform? Yeah, Bandai can make these now that they transform. Would you How like to see it? Possible? I want to see it. Okay, you're going to have to wait till the end because it's last. Oh, but I don't like to wait till the end of the show. <laughs> Alright, I've got my Kshatriya and my Wing Gundam here. And uh, Ryan, do you know how uh, SD actually got its start? I should not it. Of course you don't. That's why I'm going to tell you. <laughs> So in the, in the 80s, in a, a magazine called Model News, I think, uh, you could submit little drawings of your model or what have you. And one uh, junior student in Nagoya, mm -hmm. his name was uh, Koji Yo Yokoi, I think is how you pronounce it. Yeah. Uh, he submitted this Gundam, this drawing, where the Gundam had this like monster head. It was huge, similar to how we see this thing. And uh, it kind of caught the eye of the people at Bandai. And they, went, they uh, talked to him, and then he produced a a four block anim uh, manga, yeah. like a little comic with that, uh, that idea, those designs, and from there it just took off. And uh, before they even uh, started making the kits and mm -hmm. started making them as part of the, the Ma Gundam Ma line, they actually made Gashapon first. And Gashapon oh, are uh, yeah, yeah. those toys that come in the capsules mm. in the little game centers. But we don't have those anymore, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna talk about the, what we do have here, which is of course the model kits. Now as you can see, uh, then I've gone ahead and they produced almost every mobile suit that we can think of as an SD kit. Yeah. So here's the heavy arms, which just came out as a master grade like a year ago. Here's the Quebly, which has been out for some time. And uh, this is number 16 in the line. It actually goes up to, I have no idea now, to be honest. Oh, we got the Blitz. You know, this is another recent master grade kit that we never saw. And you might be familiar with this, this suit, Ryan. Yes. Yeah, we talked about the version Ka on the show. <laughs> this is actually, look at this number. Whoa. 209, just 209? in this series. It's, uh, it is craziness. Now here's the Strike, Strike Gundam from Gundam Seed. It's very cool. 
And they've touched on almost every every uh, anime line there is. And a lot of the Master Grades haven't even seen like some um, model kits from certain lines, but uh, the SD lines have seen everything, including the uh, the wing, of course. I get why SD would be popular in Japan, just because you don't have much space, like yeah, you know, exactly. building all your little kits. And also, like for instance, I, I got this guy here to talk about the uh, Hyakushiki. Hyakushiki as the uh, Master Grade has got that special plating. It's very expensive. A lot yeah. of people want it, they can't get it. But uh, Bandai's actually, they actually created kind of a new a new effect, a new color, just when they were working with their uh -huh. SD Hyakushiki. So you still kind of get this this kind of tone. And uh, of course he comes with his mega bazooka launcher or whatever, which takes up the... And SD is a great there. way of... Well, they originally uh, designed them that you could uh, swap pieces. Yeah. And if you look at the... Uh, design of the two kits I have here right now. You, almost all of them will come with... Uh, come on, you. Sorry, I was going to finish the sentence there. A friend of mine, I, he has two kits, so I gave you. him an SD kit. Yeah. SD kits, and he was yeah. like, oh, my kids love it, send me more. Like, it's a great way to start. It is a great way to start, and I didn't even realize how popular it was when I was uh, teaching English to a, privately to a group of kids. We had a Christmas party. And I was supposed to buy each kid a little gift less than 600 yen. And I had no idea. What do I buy these these kids? You know, the girls are okay. I'll give them a little bunny rabbit toy. But uh, with the boys, you know, they're 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. What do I do? And I was in the store one day and I found actually these SD Gundams. And so I bought like a whole um, box of them. And I gave them out as gifts. And those kids, they couldn't wait to start yeah. them. Like they just ripped them open right there, right in the middle of the little lesson class and started building. But uh, I was going to say... Like pretty much, if we can see it here, this little round poly cap mm -hmm. for the joint, it, you'll find it on almost every single uh, SD kit, which will allow you just to swap legs. Now, we've shown uh, on the show when we did an SD episode way back when, we showed how to build the crossbow, and it was exactly the same. You could uh, just slap this guy on here. And then, uh, again, more parts. It's a lot of part swapping involved because it seemed that they wanted to encourage customization. Yeah. On this this series here, I'll drop my arm back on here. They're made to easily come in and out. Now, it's not limited exclusively to just the Gundam that have appeared in animes and uh, OVAs and whatever. Not uh, Bandai actually, along with uh, Sats of Sunrise, have gone ahead and created shows exclusively uh, to pr uh, promote a line. And uh, one of them, I think, actually, I'll put these over here. Oh look. Uh, is the uh, Sengoku Den. Sengoku Den. Now, uh, Ryan, I don't know how much uh, Nintendo you played when you were very young. Are you familiar with the Romance of the Three Kingdoms? Mm -hmm. It was a stra turn based strategy game yeah. way back for the original Nintendo, which is about you know the Three Kingdoms and the formation of the Empires of Japan, and whatever. And they actually, I think it was 2007, Bandai released the Three Kingdoms uh, animated series on television. Yeah using Gundams as characters. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see we've got a Zaku 3 here, but uh, we've got also all this other kanji here, Choyo, Ko, uh, Zaku. And what they do, is they're taking the characters that are famous from those storylines, yeah. and they've made them as characters on the show, and then produced the model kits. So you can get uh, you can get these guys, and they all come with uh, quite a few of these very bright stickers, because uh, they give you these big, headdresses mm -hmm. which you're supposed to uh, make up to make your little gun and again you can part swap and whatever else this is a zaku three and here's a gundam cold cold you gundam and uh more of the same of course giant uh, giant stickers of course you always get these eye stickers in the sds and uh big head parts for the weapons and again you'll see this runner pretty much in each uh HSD kit. That's the one you need to just connect everything together. Now we've shown on the show the building of an SD before. We don't have to talk about the, the engineering, but we can still talk about the, uh, the other lines that Bandai's done, uh, post, uh, aside from the San Goku. And uh, also I wanted to show this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, this is a set. Now Bandai produces these sets. Some of the sets are in uh, conjunction with um, movies. Do you remember uh, Red Cliff, the movie? Mm. Oh, it was a Chinese Warring States period movie. I think John Woo has something to do with it. They actually produce uh, Red Cliff sets with Gundams. <laughs> this isn't one of them, actually. I wanted to bring this guy out to, sh to show you uh, the SDs color. are quite like, ornate compared to 
Wow. It's, this is like that that gold, special gold. Yeah. Gold set there. So they've got all gold in the same color and they give you the, the giant star here. But even you, you can see there's a lot of plastic. Yeah. Even for just an SD, it's quite a bit. They've even molded the, uh, the um, polycap there of the same color. It's quite cool. And you can, of course, this shows you how you can start swapping parts around to create the ultimate Gundam. Actually, this one reminds me a bit of Saint Seiya. Yeah, I know the gold. yeah, I can see it. Let's see it. We'll move this to the side here. Still more to talk about here. Um, still out of the way. Now, aside from the San San Goku Ten, the Roman of Three Kingdoms, Ryan, are you familiar with the uh, Sen Goku Jidai? I have not seen. Oh, Ryan! Uh, nice. For those uh, Japanese history buffs out there, they'll be very familiar with the Sen Goku Jidai. That's uh, what it's referred to as the Warring States period of Japan, or basically a bunch of daimyos. Uh, fought each other for control of the land and uh, control of the emperor and the shogunate. Uh, Bandai actually has created a series based on famous uh, daimyo, warlords, Japanese warlords in the time. So actually this is the uh, uh, Toyotomi Hideyoshi Gundam. Whoa. So a lot of people will recognize the names for like uh, Oda Nobunaga, you know, Hojo, uh, Takeda Shingen, and uh, Toyotomi Hideyoshi. And these are real people, but uh, just like Japan does with everything, they take these these people and then make them into an anime and a manga, figures, you know, girly figures under the same name. And they've actually gone ahead and they've made the SD Gundams. And these guys are pretty elaborate. You can see there's the, the box art. Yeah, that's, I like these designs. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, the giant headdresses. And I chose this guy because, you know, he's got these giant <laughs> wings here. And you're always going to get a lot of stickers for the markings, which is good. In some uh, old HGs, you never get even this amount of uh, stickers. So it's kind of cool. And we'll move uh, Mr. Toyotomi over here. And uh, I was going to say that, uh, well, um, Bandai was producing those kits that people love as SDs a long time ago. This is number 48 in the series, it's tall geese. Mm -hmm. And for the longest time, people were like, oh, we need an MG tall geese. We need the MG tall geese. And finally, uh, Bandai did it, but uh, the, the uh, SD Talgies has been around for quite some time, and a lot of people have actually picked it up in lieu of the MG. And uh, I actually have uh, have some blogger friends I know of actually kind of prefer the, the SD version. Really? Because when it came out, it was just so much fun. It was the only thing they could have, and that feeling of being able to build it at that time was just uh, so exciting. And now here's a Gundam many people might not know. Now with the ability of Bandai to produce these due to their similar design and low cost, they're actually putting out uh, Gundams that uh, we've never even really seen before. People who are not totally knowledgeable of Gundam and might not be aware of something called the, the Gundam Leopard. Not, I sure wasn't. But as you can see, Bandai has produced a Gundam Leopard. It's actually number 45 in the series, so it came out some time ago. And uh, I have yet to actually see the anime that has this, and I'm going to have to dig around and see if I can find it. But it's cool that... Uh, uh, they introduced these these characters that aren't as popular as just the main ones. Maybe, they, do that maybe it's a way grade. of them testing popularity. True. I mean, you can't do that with Master Grades. You can't make a kit that you know don't know is going to be popular. <laughs> right? And uh, here's something I want to talk about lastly here. Uh, everybody knows Gundam Age. It's been, mm -hmm. it's been the hit. Uh, with the Gundam Age design, there's the kits are almost all the same except for some slight changes. You can see here's the normal Gundam and the double bullet. Yeah. Now, if we uh, were thinking of buying these as a Master Grade, you had to buy the normal, and then you had to buy, you know, the Titus, and you had to buy the Spalo. And there's three distinct different kits, even though they share a lot of design similarities, especially in the torso. Well, with the SD, Bandai has uh, included everything as a set, which is what mm. a lot of people were hoping they'd get when the other Master Grade or HG <laughs> lines came out. So you have the ability to, uh, with this set, construct either the uh, age one or the double bullet and then swap back and forth which was their one of their main aims when they were producing the sd line in general is to, to allow that kind of customization so a lot of people actually uh work with uh, the sds and uh, customize them quite crazy and i've actually seen people take uh, you know the sd head and the shoulders and some of those proportions but actually use like hg parts for the rest of them and you get this like really like buffed like tall fat-headed gun and it looks awesome. Some people work exclusively with SD and it looks pretty amazing. 
At the shows, you always see a cabinet full of amazing yeah. SDs. Yeah, yeah. It's funny if you go to the Gundam competitions and stuff, there'll be a, an SD section all its own. So yeah. The people that, who customize high grade or master grade or perfect grades, they kind of compete all together. But SD is still so popular in Japan that they have their own category and people can submit to that and, and win just as prizes, almost exactly the same. So, Ryan, I kind of teased you. Yes, you did. With the wing gun in here because I said, oh, this guy transforms. But I haven't shown you his transformation. This is the money yet. shot. So, uh, actually, this is. Uh, built this guy last night and I didn't want to do the transformation because I wanted to do it here on the camera. So, we're going to do it right here in front of everybody. Okay, Ryan, I'm going to transform him. But actually, before I do, I want to show everybody the original gimmick. Here's my quotation mark. Original gimmick, BB Senshi, original gimmick that Bandai included with this guy. So first I gotta pop off these wings here. And the shield. Give me my arm back. And the gun. Yep. Now apparently this original gimmick is meant to uh, produce some kind of like sword effect here. This is something I've never seen before because uh, it doesn't do it on the uh, MGs and SDs. Pop this guy off here. MG and HG. So this guy goes here like this, okay, and then this goes here like this, and this like this. So he's actually got this sword. Whoa, <laughs> that's, that's an impressive little sword there. <laughs> yeah, wow. I am SD gimmick. All right, but let's talk about with these sound effects. With sound effects, batteries not included. Yep. Now, transformation. It's actually quite simple. Like, uh, you know, uh, you might have to part swap if you're big, building an HG that was able to do this. This guy, not even. First, I'm gonna do uh, attach these small little pieces here. And this one as well. Okay, so we got those side pieces in place here. Yep. Now, I turn these arms to go forward. Go forward like this. Push the feet together and turn it up like this. So far, so good, right? Maybe. I guess I should put the wing He's a back. plane. You're right, Ryan. It's the wing gunner. Can you guess what he transforms into? Something that flies. See, there's a reason we keep you around. <laughs> <sighs> and like so. Starting to take shape here. An enormous head. Okay. Now the shield is just like uh, very similar to the, the other designs. So you're going to slap it in here like this. And this part actually goes in the back of his head. Get in there. Go. Like that. And here we have my SD transformed Gundam. If I'm smart enough to put this, this down. <sighs> I'm doing the wrong <laughs> order because I just realized I didn't move the handle. So now I look like a chump. But anyway, it's SD, so it's easy. I'm not this is like uh, playing a game on what mode? Casual? <laughs> yeah, this is like playing on casual mode, thinking you can do it. <laughs> All right. Here we go, Ryan. Oh, it transforms. Transforms. And it it's a plane. It actually huh. comes with a piece that uh, allows yeah. you to put it on the action base, too. He'll just float there. Actually, that's pretty cool. Or uh, the action base they actually include with it, too. You can slap it on there. Bow. It's my wing. So is that SD, Sid? That is my look at, briefly, SD. And I want to hear uh, what everybody else thinks of yeah, SD. Have you built them? What do you think? And what's your favorite one? And uh, have you spent that time to actually customize them like a lot of people uh, have and Bandai actually kind of wants you to do? They push you to do, it, to do that when they uh, buy their designs, of course, in their competitions. So write in or post pictures and let us know what you guys think of SD. That concludes the look at the uh, SD line. A little bit of trivia mm -hmm. and information for everybody out there. Yeah. Cute so, little buggers. Yeah, good for kids, good for adults. Good for all ages. Good for all ages. So should we do questions? Yeah, let's uh, get to it. The first is from our Facebook. Okay. Jacob Bellarmino. We're well, talking about Facebook, Sid. We have a wall that people are using. Thank you. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm a Gumpla fan from the Philippines. I love your show. 
<laughs> and I love the stuff that you feature, especially mm-hmm. the MG Gundam line. Yeah. I just have a few questions and MGs. hopefully you guys could feature it on the show. Okay. Recently, my hand, I recently got my hands on an MG Heavy Arm, which is hard to find here in my country. I noticed that one part was unused, namely the XA Play 22. Is that normal or did I miss something? Uh, no, you didn't miss anything. A lot of times when Bandai is producing uh, model kits from the same series that have the same scale or the same frame design, they'll just put the same generic runner in each kit, and then some of them you're not going to use some of those parts. Okay. So it'll have a little X in the manual for the part that you're not meant to use, oh. and uh, you can just refer back to the first two pages of the manual, and you'll see, oh, was I supposed to use that or not? Chances are no. Part two. Mm-hmm. I read an article that Bandai will be building a factory here in the Philippines. What does this mean for Bandai fans? Will the price be cheaper? Anyway, love the show. I haven't heard anything about a uh, factory outside of Japan, but then again, I don't live outside of Japan. Uh, I imagine if they're building a factory in, say, the Philippines, that uh, the price might come down for people in that area simply because they're not paying the ship from Japan. But also, Bandai mm-hmm. makes so many kits, you can not guarantee they'll be building Gundam there. It's tough to say because uh, I don't know what they're going to be doing, but I, mm. they've recently expanded their online shop to like Hong Kong as well. So I don't know if they're being produced in Hong Kong or they're shipping to Hong Kong. Or, oh, okay. You know, there's, there's Malaysia and Indonesia and the Philippines and that, that whole area of the world is, you know, gums of fevers. Gums of fever. fever. And I, Bandai, you know, I'm not surprised to see them opening factories in these kind of areas. Next is Tony89250. Do you guys know if the thrones from Gundam 00 will be getting master grades? Uh, it's tough to tell. I think if you haven't seen it by now, then probably not. But uh, who knows what Bandit has up their sleeve. They occasionally surprise us. Bandai full of surprises. Neon Wave 1. Yes? Is it possible to have an entire episode about mecha kits that aren't that popular, such as Broken Blade, SPT Laser, Dragnar? Dragonon? Yeah, of course it's possible. It's, 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 plan of TV. it's all planned out. Actually, it's not all planned out, but I do know that I still want to show these things. And I've actually got a scope dog kit sitting on my desk at home that I'm trying to build so we can get on the show here. Yeah. And after we're, we do that, we're going to look at some of the Mazinger kits and whatever else we can get uh, uh, into our schedule here. But the thing is, it's Gumpla TV and our focus is Gumpla and Bandai. They don't stop. They don't give us any rest. You know, no rest for the they're weekend. just... Throwing kids ass left and right here. This last three months has just been crazy. We'll do our best. Yes. And, uh, yeah. I just realized this. It, my bike is on the outside. <laughs> That's okay. Let's continue. Um, Ryuzo. Costanzo. Hey, guys. Okay, this is about the posters. Well, why don't you read the question before okay. we say it's about the posters? No, what is... Do you know where I could find the posters of Gundam Epion? Posters for the Epion. Now, okay. this is a common question. Okay. A very common question. On all social platforms. <laughs> Just wait for a competition. Uh, we, we don't sell these. They're not bought no. from Bandai. They're given as promotional material when you ordered uh, certain assortments of the Gundam Epion when it came out. So we do have some. And we use them to give away for, as prizes for competitions. Oh, and yeah. Talking about like prizes that. and competitions. So, here we go. I mentioned our Facebook wall before. I see, yes, see I was did. priming people. That's right. That's some poor priming. But anyway, <laughs> now people are paying attention. Yeah, now that you're paying attention, uh, post some of your SD Gundam on our wall. Yes. And you might win a poster. Yes, we're, we'll give away several. So post pictures of your three, SD Gundam. Because three is what I'm looking and for. And your, uh, if you customize your SD Gundam, any work like that. Random drawing, right? Because we're not going to go with that. Uh, now, this isn't getting a competition or page or something. You've watched it here and you've heard it. <laughs> And yeah. you've posted it on our wall. That's right. So you have a really good chance of winning there. That's right. Because it's the end of the show. and <laughs> Sometimes people don't watch all the way through. Is that what you're but We'll find out who watches now. Yeah. And you'll be our best friends. Okay. Uh, next is Scope Eye Video. Mm-hmm. A very uh, popular poster. Speaking of best friends. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Hands. <laughs> the way destroyed is a nice choice. <laughs> The destroyers play kind of a main part in the Macross, but they're a cool classic design and the wave kits are pretty incredible. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. And I agree with him. He's usually pretty observant when he's uh, yeah. mentioning stuff like that. For example, 
I'm not as much of a Macross fan as, as Ryan is. I don't know the the place of the destroys in the, in the series so much, but uh, you know, people comment like that, fill us in, let, let me know. I feel yeah, more knowledgeable. Know. Yeah. I feel I learned something today. He's a classic. Yeah. Parlon 2. Hey, I have a question, said in Ryan. Mm -hmm. My new version Kai is quite lonely here. Is there a possibility that we could get an evolved Sazabi version Kai this December? And more power to your show. Uh, well, when they first announced the big release last December of the version Kai, the one thing that came to my mind is, okay, that means they have to do a Sasabi, right? Mm -hmm. They have to do a Sasabi. I mean, they've already done the old ver uh, new Gundam, and now they've done a new Gundam version Ka. The Sasabi originally released in, like, 2000, which makes it 13 years old. Oh, we're due for a 2.0 slash version Ka slash remaster. But I don't know. <laughs> we have to wait to hear from Bandai. And if it's something yeah. that is coming out uh, in December, which it could be because it's just it's such a big kit and a high price point, they would release it in December. If it is coming out then, and we're not going to hear rumblings of it until probably the summer at the earliest. Okay. So we have a couple more months to wait. We need a hotline to bundle. Yeah. We need a red phone. I have their phone number, but they're not going to answer my questions. Yeah, of course. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, final evolution from the blog. Gentlemen, thanks for all the great information. After close to two decades, I've decided to pull my few remaining Gumpla out of storage and spruce them up with uh, panel linings and top coating. I can see that a lot has changed in the MG line since my Zaku 2, GPO1, GPO1F slash B, GPO3. Is that like Facebook, prior to Facebook? Yeah, it's early Facebook. And RGZ91 were, were produced. I have two questions. First, is there any hope of uh, new releases for these older kits with version 2.0 updates? Well, they did do the, like a 2.0 Zaku, mm -hmm. not okay. necessarily from... Uh, that series. No, they, they've done only the Gundam, the G3 Gundam, you know, the old Delta, or sorry, the uh, Zeta. Those have got all the 2.0s. But will they go back and do, say, like the RGZ91 or the GPO1? I don't know, especially if they're starting to hit at those with the real grade line now. Mm -hmm. And then we got a GPO1 real grade coming. Uh, if there's an anniversary that rolls around, maybe the series becomes 25, 30, 40 years old. Mm -hmm. Maybe Bandai will do something at that point. But I, I don't see something just being inserted into their okay. release schedule at, at this point in time. I mean, they're still focused on Gundam U, UC okay. quite a lot right now. Uh, second part of the question. Um, now that my intro... Okay, sorry. Second, I have re read mixed reviews of the old GPO2 and hence never purchased it. Now that my interest in Gumpla has been renewed, I'm again debating whether or not to pick it up to complete my MGGP line. Would you happen to have any insight as to whether I should build that or would my time be better spent with the newer MG kits? Thank you for the show. I enjoy it greatly. Cheers. Thank you very much. I don't know how to answer this, to be honest. From my perspective, I would vote build a newer kit because I'm more interested in the newer kits and their engineering and the newer animes. But for someone who's a big fan of that old series and has everything else, why would you not pick up that kit to complete your collection? Yeah, like you having that to. one hole there, that would drive me nuts. So let us know actually what you decide to do. Yeah, if let you, us know. If you uh, pick it up and uh, complete your collection, let us know what you thought about it. Send and if you skipped photos. it and did something else, uh, let, us, let us know how yeah. terrible you feel and we'll console you. Uh, that's all the questions for today. Okay. Well, that's going to wrap up our episode. Yes. I want to say that uh, uh, I don't know when exactly this is going to air because the new Master Rage Shinanju version, ka, mm -hmm. or non-version, ka, OVA version, Shinanju OVA version, is supposed to be released uh, earlier than normal. Normally, okay. Bandai releases a, release date's a Saturday. The one for the Shinanju is a Wednesday. So as soon as we get that kit in our building, we're going to make the video, which means you might see it before this video comes yes. up, or you might see it after. Either way, we're going to be doing a special video for the Shinanju OVA version. So you can all look forward to that. And yeah, we have a blog and a Facebook mm -hmm. and uh, other stuff. And you're welcome to comment on what we do. And take pictures of SD and win posters. Oh yeah, and remember you can win a poster. Yeah. For all of the people out there, I swear to God, I get at least two emails a week. Now's the time <laughs> to get an SD kit, build it quickly, Post it on our Facebook wall and stand a very good chance of winning a post. All right. Okay, we'll leave it like that. No, yeah. we're good. See you later. See ya. Every day I'm shuffling. I'm a mech and I shuffle. I love that it. song is fun. Mm -hmm.